It seems that the city of San Francisco has been massively overtaxing General Motors. General Motors knew about this. They were like, you know what? We don't care. It's only $100 million to us. It's really not that significant. And as long as General Motors continues to let us run our robo taxis here, you know what? It's really worth it. Well, now things have changed. Now that San Francisco has banned General Motors cruise robo taxis from operating in the city, GM's saying, hang on a minute, you overcharged us. You massively overtaxed us. And well, technically General Motors is correct. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. You all know what happened with General Motors with their robo taxis. General Motors said that they were driving autonomously. Turns out they weren't. Turns out human beings were having to intervene every few miles, every few miles. So very frequently, probably even more frequently than what, say, full self-driving for a Tesla vehicle has to intervene. A human has to intervene on those cars. So it turns out General Motors cruise robo taxis were not as, well, they were never robo taxis, were they, in the first place? And this all became kind of exposed once the GM robo taxi had hit someone, it wasn't really, I don't think it was the robo taxi's fault, but what happened was um, someone worked, walked out from the curb. Uh, the robo taxi obviously couldn't see them. Uh, they walked in front of the robo taxi, the robo taxi hit them. But then the problem was then that rather than stopping in place, it continued to drive while dragging a person underneath the car for about, I think it was about five or six meters. So this person was just stuck under the taxi, the robo taxi, and it just kept driving possibly because the person driving the robot taxi, it wasn't the taxi itself, it was a person, couldn't see that there was someone stuck underneath it. So someone was uh, remotely driving this robot taxi because that's what happens when the taxi, robot taxis don't know what to do. Someone from the head office will drive them and that person couldn't see someone, the person underneath the taxi. So as a result, this whole scandal became exposed. Everyone realized and learned that actually these robot taxis weren't driving themselves. Human beings were having to, having to intervene quite frequently. And then the permit for Cruise General Motors robo taxis was revoked. So they're not allowed to drive anymore. And there's been an investigation going on ever since. Now General Motors are blasting San Francisco in a lawsuit for over 108 million US dollars in falsely accrued taxes. General Motors says the city of San Francisco used the presence of its cruise self-driving unit to tie its tax bill to a portion of General Motors' global revenue. Now, reading this story, it does seem to me like San Francisco intentionally overtaxed General Motors. Normally, I don't have a problem with um, big conglomerates like General Motors being overtaxed because often companies such as this don't pay taxes. But the truth is, General Motors, Ford, Tesla, they actually pay their fair share of taxes in America. It's companies like Google and Apple who are doing really dodgy things, who we should be going after, who governments should be going after, and they're not paying taxes. I mean, companies like this, General Motors, as far as I can tell, they are paying their taxes fairly. Apple, Google, not. Absolutely not. They pay almost no taxes here in Australia. They sell plenty of stuff. <laughs> That's for sure. Anyway, General Motors said in a lawsuit that San Francisco unfairly taxed it $108 million over seven years, despite the automaker having very low sales and almost no personnel in the city. So General Motors is saying, yeah, not many people buy our cars in San Francisco, but you know what? So what? The company contends San Francisco used the presence of its cruise self-driving unit to tie its tax bill to a portion of General Motors' global revenue, which meant more than $3 billion was subject to city taxes last year alone. And obviously General Motors didn't make anywhere near $3 billion in San Francisco, so I think they'll win this case. GM argued that San Francisco-based Cruise is wholly separate from General Motors and only began generating a very small amount of revenue last year. In fact, General Motors has accrued a minuscule amount of revenue from its cruise division. So there's no way known they could have to pay $107 million in taxes on the revenue from cruise. GM's core automotive business does not employ anyone in San Francisco, has no plants or other physical locations in the city, has no dealerships in the city, and sells only a de minimis amount of retail goods, a very small amount, approximately $677,000 worth in 2022 in the city. According to the complaint filed last week in state court in San Francisco, um, basically San Francisco has knowingly 
massively overcharged General Motors. A spokesperson for the San Francisco City Attorney said the office is reviewing the complaint and will respond in court. I personally think that's a really bad move from San Francisco. Just settle. Just admit. You overcharged them. Give them the money back. That's the easiest thing to do. Why would you waste everyone's time by taking this to court? Anyway, the suit comes as the city's political and business leaders are trying to position the tech hub as a worldwide innovation center ready to shine again after a sluggish post-pandemic recovery has made it an emblem of urban decline from homelessness and the fentanyl scourge to retail flight and vacant offices. Fairly or unfairly, San Francisco has gotten a pretty bad reputation as of late. City officials have put off plans to increase business taxes set for this year to 2025. The gross receipts tax, which makes up most of the city's business tax, brings in about $800 million a year, the city's comptroller said in July. At that rate, General Motors accounts for 2% of the city's taxes for the last seven years, even though it, yeah, like it says, it, it doesn't even have a business there. The automaker said that under a California mandate, taxes must fairly reflect business operations within a city and that it's inherently distortive for San Francisco to bill it heavily for the payroll of crews. Many employees of crews work remotely from home, some not even in the city, according to the complaint. But I think the key point here that GM are really making is they've made no profit from crews. Uh, how do you tax someone $107 million on no profit? GM is facing a fallout, though, over Cruise losing its license in October, and that's where the key issue lies, to operate on public roads in California. The suspension followed high-profile robo-taxi crashes in San Francisco, including one with a fire truck and another with a pedestrian who was gravely injured after being dragged 20 feet underneath the car. General Motors are seeking to recover almost $13 million for interest and penalties on top of the refund. So General Motors are saying, you know what? You overcharge us $107 million. We want an extra $13 million in interest and penalties. Plus, we want you to pay our court fees. The city's going to be up for probably $130 million US dollars. You know what? Just give them back the $107 million. Make some kind of settlement. Make it go away. That's the wise move here. Is San Francisco, are the city officials intelligent? If they are, that's what they'll do. If they're not, they'll go to court. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching.